So you went hunting today and you didn't come home. That's a scenario you don't want to come into. Hi, my name is Roy Canterbury. I'm going to be your host today on Archer Talk 101. What we're going to talk about today is a tree stand safety. So when you go hunting, you don't have to worry about having it be an unsafe condition. There's a couple of things you want to look at when you take a tree stand. Now, there's several different types. There's the hang on type. There's a ladder type. Uh, and then the climbers. They all each have their own advantages, disadvantages, and safety concerns you have to worry about. So let's start with the hang on tree stand. Now, the proper way to put them in is take, uh, put your first peg in so that it's an easy step on. Because remember, during the archery season for deer, it's normally in the wintertime. You're wearing big, heavy clothes. You don't want to try and put them on once you're in your stand. If you don't wear them going to the stand, uh, which I don't because it's just too hot to walk in. Uh, I put them on once I get to the tree stand and then climb up. But remember, you don't have a lot of flexibility. So what you want to do is your first one needs to be a comfortable step up to the first one. Then one way to figure out where you want to have your next step is uh, put your arm where your first step is and then put it like about a 45 degree angle. And that's about the distance you want between them. So you have, you're going to have more steps, but they're going to be much easier steps. Now, when you, once you put your steps in, you get where you want your tree stand, you need to put at least two more because you want to take your last step with your one foot before you step on your tree stand. You want to step down to your tree stand, not use it to step up on because if it does fall, you're putting all your weight on it. You always want to have three points of contact. And to do that, you're going to have a couple more pegs in. You're going to have one that you're going to have your hand on and then your other hand onto it. When you step down, you have two hands on two different pegs as well as stepping down. Once once you step down, slow down, know it's safe, then you can move over. Uh, and you're gonna make sure you have your, your safety strap on. You know, that should be the first thing that goes on uh, is your safety strap. That needs to be done before you do anything else. Now, one thing that is really good to have in there is what's called lineman's line. Uh, what you do is you're climbing up your tree. You're gonna keep moving this line up. And the way it's set up is there's a, a pressic knot that as you pull on it will lock. So you take and you slide this loop up your tree trunk as you're going up. So if you ever fall off of it, that is going to stop and lock you in place. So that's how you're going to climb up the tree stand. Now, once you're up in your tree stand, you still attach to that. You're going to strap your safety harness around the tree. And now once you do that, you're going to hook onto your safety harness uh, onto uh, the tree that you're, you have the safety harness hooked to. And you're going to leave that rope in there. So anytime you get ready to descend, you're going to hook up to that and descend down. And those knots you can take. And if you slide them down, they'll slide just, just fine or up. It's when you pull on the loop when they lock. So that's what you want to do as you're climbing up. Now, once you get in your tree stand, there's a couple of things you need to do. You need to make sure that you don't have so much slack in your safety strap that you can actually step off your tree stand. I like to set mine up so that when I'm sitting, there's a slight little tug on it pulling to pull me up a little bit. As I'm standing up, now then I have, have a little room. I can turn and move. Now, I have mine set up so that I can't step off my tree stand and fall below the tree stand. You know, if I do step off it for some reason, I'm not going to be below my tree stand. I'm going to be able to get up back onto that tree stand or work your way around to your pegs. Now, Let's talk about the position of your pegs versus your tree stand. Now, you want to have, whether it be on the right or left side, depending on which way you're setting it up, you want to climb up your pegs on one side and 90 degrees to where your pegs are at is where your tree stand is going to, your hang on tree stand is going to be pointing. That way you can climb up. Uh, I've, I've seen some where they put them underneath the tree stand, you have to kind of climb around. That is where most of your archers that have trouble in your tree stands that fall because they're not able to keep all their uh, points of contact. You always want to have three points of contact, two hands and one feet, one feet, one foot, uh, or two feet and one hand. So as you're climbing up, always keep the contact with it. And now you have your lineman's line that you're going up. You're moving this pressing knot up as you're moving up. Uh, so now if you do fall, you're not going to fall very far because you're going to move that up so that it's, it's pulling up on you move. You move up a step. You slide it up, you put another step and slide up. So that's why you're going to go through and climb up the tree stand since you're always there, always safe. Now, 
one thing you want to do is once you get in your tree stand, you're going to want to learn where the pressure is on that tree stand. Uh, let's say you have a shot where you actually have to lean out just a little bit to get around an obstacle to get to that shot. Uh, now you need to know how to depend on that, that strap to make sure that you don't step off too far. Uh, you know, test it, you know, while you're there, grab your hand on the back of it and lean out and see how far you're going to go. The last thing you want to do is start leaning over your tree stand and think your strap is going to hold you and it's not holding it. And then you end up stepping off your tree stand and falling. Uh, one of the things you want to make sure you do is as you're climbing the tree stand, you do not have the bow in your hand. You do not have an arrow in the bow either. Uh, you're going to climb up and you're going to, before you climb up, hook your tree stand to a pole rope. Now you may have to climb up, get your tree stand in place, have your pole rope, have it drop it down. You may have to go back down and, and hook it up and then pull it up. Now, before you pull it up, you want to make sure you are strapped into the tree stand uh, safety harness, not the lineman's uh, line. That way you're ready to go. You pull your bow up, you get it ready. If you have a hook that you're hanging on, you can hang your hook on there until you get all situated. If you're going to sit down, you want to have it so that it's there ready. Uh, you're going to take your arrow, go ahead and knock your arrow at that point because now you're ready to hunt. Until then, you're just in preparation mode. Uh, you want to make sure that you're ready to hunt before you start grabbing your bow getting it ready uh, i remember one time i was out i was climbing up in the tree stand and i had any more got in there got the the bow pulled up and here here comes a buck come on i hadn't had my arrow knocked yet so i was able to get the arrow knocked because there was behind a tree and i was able to get the deer that's just you're just in the tree stand just a few minutes it can happen that quick or you can sit there all day long and not see anything so you got to be comfortable uh, that's the thing. If you're not comfortable, then you're more likely going to have uh, problems because you're going to start moving around. Uh, or if you're tired, start dozing off. And that's why it's important to make sure that that safety harness is going to hold you up. If you happen to doze off, which, you know, sitting for a long period of time is, is easy to do. So you want to make sure that that straight tree strap, that safety strap is going to hold you into the tree stand. Now let's talk about your safety straps. Now, when I first started, it was just a waist belt, goes around your waist, hooks on. Now, those aren't the safest ones to use, uh, but th that's what they had when I first started um, a couple decades ago. Uh, now they have the harnesses with it fit around you, where you have the ones go around your legs, on around your waist, around your shoulders. And a lot of the, most of the new ones now all have this other strap that hangs on there that has a loop in it. And what that is for is if you fall out of your tree stand, you're depending on that safety harness to save you. Well, it does save you, but it's going to cut the circulation off to your legs. And eventually, it can, you can still die from just hanging on your safety harness. That's why you need to have a plan on how to get out of it. That's what those are on there for. So you can put your foot in there and you can stand up and relieve the pressure off of your harness. That gives you a little more time to figure out how to get in place. Now, talking about that, you need to make sure that somebody knows where you're at, uh, you know, all times and what time to expect you home. And, you know, if you're not going to be home by that time, if you're tracking a deer, call them up and say, hey, I'm tracking a deer. I'll be home later. Uh, that way, if you do have a problem, there's somebody there to help, you know, come rescue you. Uh, that's why I prefer to actually hunt with a buddy. Uh, that way, whoever you're hunting with, they're going to come to you or you're going to go to them. And if it's after dark and you haven't shown up, they're going to come to you. And then you always want to meet up and walk out together. That way, you know that your, your buddy is there. Uh, that's that's always a good thing to do is, is hunt with somebody else. I know there are people that hunt by themselves. Uh, they do it very successfully. But, you know, you have to pay attention to what you're doing at all times. So that's just a couple of things just on the uh, hang on tree stands. Now let's get into ladder stands. Now those are a little bit different story because you're gonna put them up just like a you know the ladder stand because you're just climbing up a ladder. You know they're a little safer to climb up because it's you know just like a ladder. You know the problem is when you're setting them up, they're not stable. So a lot of them will have a strap and a pole that goes between the ladder and the tree stand before you get up to the top platform. Now, when you set that up there, the first thing you want to do is you want to get that adjusted to where it's supposed to be. Now, you want to remember the platform is designed to be level. 
if it's tilting at an angle, then you're gonna either have too steep of a ladder climb up or not steep enough ladder climb. So you wanna make sure when you put it up, that is the height where it's gonna be. So now once you have this little uh, bar going from your ladder to the tree, that gives you a little support. You're gonna strap that down. So that gives you a little bit more leeway in there. Uh, you're not gonna be able to use a lineman's a line and a press six knot because where you're at, you don't have access to the tree up high enough to move it. So that's something that you're gonna have to pay attention to. It's a little bit safer, but you still got, got to think about once you get up in that tree stand, how are you gonna fasten that top of that uh, ladder stand on? Now, I like to have one of the straps already hooked to it, ready to go. So all I was gonna do is get up to the top. Now, before I strap anything, I'm gonna hurry up and, and fasten my safety harness to the tree. You know, that's number one priority there because don't try and worry about the tree stand just yet because it's there. And that's why setting up a tree stand, you really need to have two people there because the, the second person is going to help stabilize that ladder until you get there. Get underneath the ladder and pull to help, you know, so you can keep your hands on both sides of it underneath and keep, keep it steady for the person climbing up. Once they get there, they fasten on your safety strap. And now, now they're safe if the ladder happens to fall you're still safe because you're not going to fall to the ground. That's where more bow hunters get hurt is in that sudden stop after you fall out of your tree stand. So now, now you've got it strapped. Uh, you're going to, I like using ratchet straps because they get a little tighter. They're easier to adjust than the ones that just kind of pull. Uh, those, those work okay, but I don't like the, uh, you know, the looseness that you have in them. And the same thing with the hang on stance. You know, most of them have a strap. I always like to put a, at least one or two more straps on you can out set up. So that way it's nice and secure. You don't have to worry about one strap failing. Always have a couple of uh, choices. Have a backup. And it's the same thing with the ladder stands. When you get them up there, a strap, you know, a lot of them will have a little hook for them to hook into. Strap them in there. I like to put a second strap on because last thing you want to do is, is uh, have a squirrel come by and, and chew through your strap and you're climbing up think it's safe and it's not so i always like to have two of them and especially if you're sitting for a long period of time you always want to make sure you check those straps before you climb up uh, same thing with a hang on that you're going to be worrying about those straps up there so now once you're in there you're going to do the same thing you see it on the uh, hang on stand is you're going to make sure you have that safety harness adjusted if there's a platform which you can sit down on which a lot of them don't some of them do uh, make sure that it pulls up on you when you're sitting and you can stand up completely and then move around. I also know where, where you can step and where you can't step uh, to make sure you're not going to step off the platform. Some of them actually have armrests on them, which those are really nice. Have an armrest to rest your arms on while you're sitting there. That also helps keep them stepping off to the side. But they can also cause a little bit of problem depending on where you're at and what you're doing because you have to do worry about those a little bit. If you're sitting down trying to shoot, they could be in the way. Standing up, normally not a problem. Uh, so now let's get into your climbing stance. Now those are a little bit different story because you're actually using a two-piece stand. One is for your feet and one is for you to sit on. So what you do is you sit down, raise your feet up and stand up, move the top piece. And then you sit down, you keep walking up the three, three stand that way. Now that you can also... Uh, use safety straps once you get up there because the last thing you do is have them fall. Uh, so now once you get up there, I would put in uh, a lineman's line, you know, hook up to that press six knot as you're climbing back. If you use the same tree stand tree over and over, uh, you're going to climb up, have that on there. Go ahead and hook up to that. And that way you know you're safe. Uh, you can be doing that as you're climbing up as well. You can put one of those on. Uh, so as you're moving up, move the safety harness up the tree stand. Fasten it down, move your knot up, climb up. That way, if something does fail in your climber, you're still safe. Uh, you can you can get down a little bit easier. But you know, climbing down off of, of a, a climber is a little difficult because if you so like you use the feet part, now you don't have anything to release the pressure off the top part. So uh, plan that out. You know, figure out okay, how can I get down if the if I lose the bottom part of it or what happens if the top part falls you know they get so long their straps on them they can uh, they can go bad you know that's why you want to always check that 
So now once you get up in your tree stand on a, a climber, you're going to have to see how much movement you have on them. You don't have nearly as much movement as you do with uh, a hang on or a ladder stand. So you want to make sure when you're lining up, you have a good position to where you expect the game to come by. You know, for a right hander, I like to set up where I think they're going to come to my left side. Left handers should set up so they come to the right side, but they don't always cooperate. They come on the opposite side. So figure out if they do come on the wrong side for you, then how are you going to get that shot? You know, practice that a few times. And that's an off season. It's really good to actually shoot out of your tree stands just to get the hang of, okay, how can I shoot out of this tree stand? How can I shoot off this ladder stand if they come in the wrong way? Uh, how do I shoot off this climber if it's come in the wrong way? Uh, so you, you just got to keep practicing that. And the other thing you want to do is you want to check your equipment. You know, if, it, if your equipment's more than five years old, you might want to think about replacing it because, you know, things can rust, things can break. Uh, you know, your safety is number one. So if you have an older tree stand or hang on stand or climber, definitely check it over because if it fails on you, you know, it's not worth the cost of a new ladder stand uh, or a climber. You know, he's, they're not, they're not cheap. Some of them are, are fairly expensive. He can spend several hundred dollars on a tree stand. And that's uh, something that you don't want to do. That's cheap insurance to make sure that you don't, don't fall out of your tree stand. So, the one thing we did not cover yet is blinds, uh, shooting out of a blind. Now, you don't have to worry about a safety harness because you're on the ground. You're either sitting on the ground or kneeling on the ground. Normally, you're going to be sitting uh, inside of a blind. There are a few different things that you have to think about in a blind. Uh, if the wind comes up, you know, make sure you have your blind tied down so that the wind don't move on you. Uh, that's, that's something that you have to worry about there. You know, they are nice because they are warmer in the wintertime. You get out of the breeze, a little little bitty heater uh, uh, keep you nice and warm. Uh, the thing you have to think about, too, is when you're shooting out of that blind, you have a little bit limited view. And also, you have to think about where is your arrow at? You know, try it a couple of times. Draw back your bow. And what if they were, like, real close to you? And you had to shoot. Now look at where your pins are with your eye. Now look down, where's your arrow at? Look and see, is it going to go through your blind or is it going to go through the shooting area where you're supposed to be shooting through? That's something you want to look at uh, in where you're going to be shooting. Uh, the same thing with either tree stands or ladder stands. Uh, you want to make sure you have a clear view. Uh, if you have a shot that's 20 yards away, you draw, draw up and all of a sudden there is... Uh, branch that's in your way really close that, that's down low, you might actually hit that. Because if you're shooting, you know, if you have a branch that's say five feet away from you and you have like your 60, 70 yard pin that actually hits it, chances are the arrow's going to hit it before it even gets there because they start off low and climb up high. I think I have another podcast later on on how to adjust for that. But you look at where your eye is and the pin is versus where the arrow is because they don't start off the same. They catch up later. So that's something you have to look at. So that, that's kind of what I have on, on safety. If anybody has any anything on it, you can always leave comments. You can always get a hold of me. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can get a hold of me uh, on the Facebook group, Archer Talk 101. You can go out there. It's a private group. Just go in there and, and ask to join. I'll leave a link in the description below on how to get there, make it a little easier for you to get there. Uh, the other way you can get a hold of me is out to archtalk101.com. There I have a lot of information out there. Uh, I, I post the reviews. If I review anything, I'll post reviews on it. Uh, anything I happen to uh, uh, create as far as shooting form, how to work on bows, that also is there as well as in the group. Uh, there's, there's just a lot of information out there and you can get information from there. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, to, to be a better shot, one thing you might want to do is look into coaching. I have a coaching program where I teach it online. Uh, it is uh, some recorded videos that you're going to watch, and then you're going to get on to a Zoom call, and we're going to be talking live one-on-one, -on -one, you know, every week uh, for the uh, coaching program. So that's that's something that you might want to consider. 
if you want to be a better shot, you know, I teach the secrets that Olympic archers use so they can hit the spot they're aiming at. And wouldn't you like to shoot like an Olympic archer? I can teach you how to do that. And I'll leave a link in the description to a form to fill out to apply to the uh, coaching program. I have a free 15 minute call that you'll get first before you even get into the program. And we'll talk about uh, what uh, uh, what you're looking for and what you're expecting out of coaching. And we'll see whether or not, you know, it would be a good fit for you. You know, that's a free 15 minute call. Fill out that form. I'll send you a link to my calendar and you can book your, your free 15 minute time. So once again, my name is Roy Canterbury and I've been your host today on Arch Talk 101 on tree stand safety. So stay tuned next week. We'll have a different subject.